Welcome to a D20 Pro video tutorial. My name is Curtis, and I'll be going over GM basic game preparation. To start, I'm using the Pathfinder rule set, Pathfinder Beastry, and the free Campsites Volume 1 map pack found on the D20 Pro marketplace. In D20 Pro, I've already downloaded and imported the maps and creatures assets from the marketplace to my library. So from the D20 Pro main menu, I will select Library. Again, the library is where all maps, all creatures, all items, and all player handouts reside. So in this video, we'll be focusing on the map library and the creatures library. In most adventures, as we prepare our game, we'll need a map to show our players. Thus, in the map library, we will pick a map. I shall pick Field 000 and Campsite 007 from the Campsites module I downloaded earlier. Next, we'll need to add some creatures to the map. So in the library, I'll select the creatures icon to see the creatures library. I'm going to add four player characters to form our party. Let's add a wizard, and they're familiar, a rogue, a cleric, and a fighter to the map. And I do this by drag and drop. Now to prepare for the nighttime encounter, I want to add two owlbears to the map. I could use this scroll bar to find the appropriate selection, or I can use the find feature on the top. I'm going to find the owlbear by its name, and now I'll add it to the map by dragging and dropping on the map. To add multiple of the same creature, I can either drag and drop from the creature library to the map multiple times, or once I have one creature on the map, I can select it, then right click to pull up the context menu and make it clone. Notice the C next to the clone text indicates a hotkey. So instead, I can simply select the creature on the map and press the C key on the keyboard to add the clone to the map. Now, since I want these owlbearers to be invisible to the players when they arrive, I'm going to make these creatures invisible on the map and also out of initiative. This is a similar process as before, and there's multiple ways to achieve this. We first can select the creature or creatures that we want to include, then right click to pull up the context menu, and we want to alter the state. So we go to Alter, Initiative, Leave. We can see that there's hotkeys here too. In the next, we're going to do right click to bring up the context menu, and then go down to Alter, then Visibility, then Invisible. And one advanced tip, to change between visible and invisible, there's a common hotkey of V. This, we can see its effect by selecting the creature and pressing the V on our keyboard, and we'll see on the GM screen that those creatures become mostly transparent. This indicates those creatures are invisible to the players. Now to prepare our daytime random encounter, let's use the jungle warm forest CR5 random encounter table found in the Pathfinder Beastry book. Let's also pull up the game log and roll a percentage. To do this, we'll go to the D20 Pro main menu and select Game Log. We can notice there are hotkeys here too. Now inside the text input field, we can type slash ROLL space D100 and press Enter. Now we can see D20 Pro rolls our results. Note that we can also perform this using Core Dice. The result we got was an 11. From the table, we can see this to be one constrictor stake. Let's go ahead and add this enemy to our daytime map. First, let's change our map from the campsite to the field. There are a couple of ways we can do this. One way, we can go up to the D20 Pro main menu and select the map that we want. Alternatively, we can use our Alt keys plus the Numbers row to pick our map respectfully. In this case, we have the field as map 1 and campsite as map 2. So we can press Alt plus 1 to pull up the field, and also Alt plus 2 to be on the campsites. So, whichever way you choose, we can now add our encounter to the map. So that's one constrictor snake. Hmm, that sounds a little boring for my four PCs to handle. And since I'm on Awesome GM, I'm going to add four more to bring this encounter more life. Now, as our players explore different maps, we want to keep their existing stats such as current HP and status effects and the like. And simply using another copy from the creature library, we'll put a fully rested token on the map. Remember earlier we placed four PCs on the campsite map? And we want to bring them to the field map. There are a couple of ways to perform this. One way, we can use the roster and drag drop to the existing map. Let's use the D20 Pro main menu and select roster. 
Aha, look at that. We still have snakes on initiative. And looking at the map, they would be also visible to our players. So let's quickly update this. Remembering hotkeys from before? To have the creatures leave initiative, it's Alt plus I. So let's select all the snakes and then use our hotkey Alt plus I. Now we want to make them invisible also. And again, remembering from our earlier discussion to toggle creature visibility is the hotkey V. So let's select that and press V. Okay, great. Now let's use the roster to move one of our PC characters from the campsites map to the field map. To do this, we simply drag drop the creature directly from the roster to directly where we want it on the map. So let's drag drop Katashi to the current map. Another really useful feature of the roster is the ability to find any creature on the map, on any map, and locate it quickly. To do this, we simply click on the creature on the roster we wish to find. This will pull up the map that the creature is located, center the map for us, and highlight the creature. Let's use the roster to find Dolrith. Now that we've found Dolrith and the rest of the party, let's select them all, right click to pull up the context menu, then we want to change the location and move to a new map. Now we see a creature transfer mode on the top middle of the screen. We can now change our map back to the field and select where to drop the PCs on the new map. Let's use another way to change the map. So in the map library, we see a full list of the maps. The green icon is our current map, and the, all the orange icons are maps currently opened. Although since we only have two maps open, there's only one green and one orange at this time. So let's go ahead and simply click on that orange icon to pull up the associated map. Now let's select the spot for the rest of the PCs to be on the map. We can always move them around later if need be. Okay, great. So to review, we learned about the map library, the creature library, how to open maps, how to add creatures to the map, how to change maps, how to change creatures' statuses such as initiative and visibility. We learned about the roster. Now the last thing we need to learn is how to save a map. This will save all creatures on the map and any modifications done to the map itself. So again, there are multiple ways to achieve this. One way is to use the D20 Pro main menu and click on the Save to Disk icon, which will override the existing map in the map library with the current one. An alternative way is to use the D20 Pro main menu and press the X to close the map, which will actually bring up the Save Map dialog box, where we can either press OK to save the changes to the existing map, we press Cancel or the X on this dialog box to cancel out of saving, we can also discard all changes and close the map, or we can save a copy of the map. Saving a copy of the map is my preferred method. That way we can use the maps again later for another group or encounter without having to delete unnecessary items on the map. And finally, one additional way to save a map is inside the map library itself. We can click on the green icon, which is again is the current map, to pull up the Save Map dialog box. Let's go ahead and use this way to save a copy of the map, and we will also open up that saved map. One thing to note that saved maps will put every creature on the map in the out of initiative mode for us automatically. This will be useful later on when we have larger maps with multiple encounters on the map.